As you guys know, this channel is all about coffee. But I realized that we rarely talk about where the coffee comes from. So today I thought I'd make a little video about the coffee cherry itself. What is it? Why is it important for our understanding of coffee? And how does it actually taste? Today we'll talk about all that and if you stick around to the end of the video, I will also try to eat a coffee cherry. Yes, you heard right, eat a coffee cherry and tell you how it tastes. Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about this little guy here, the coffee cherry. If you're reading about coffee online, sooner or later you'll see someone saying that coffee is a fruit. And while it's pretty cool to know that coffee is a fruit, I think that we need to dig a little bit deeper down if we really want to understand coffee. So I did the best thing you can do in that kind of situation and I went out to a coffee farm and picked some cherries. So you can see here, I got a nice little handful of cherries. Actually, it's not really harvest season yet, so I was lucky to find a few cherries that were red and ripe, because uh, most of them are still green at this time of the year. So one could say that coffee cherries are kind of like the most pure state that you'd find coffee in. Most people know about coffee beans, but they don't really have any idea how this kind of coffee is transformed into the bean. So these brownish beans don't have anything to do with the pinto or kidney beans that you'd put in your burrito. They're just called beans because, well, someone back in the day thought that they looked like beans and somehow this label just got stuck. In fact, what's inside the coffee cherries are seeds. There are two seeds inside a coffee cherry, uh, except sometimes there's only one and then it's called a pea berry, but uh, usually there'll be two seeds. So let me try to open up this cherry here and then you can see for yourself. So if you just squeeze out here on the skin, these two seeds will come out. And yeah, those are the ones that will turn into beans eventually. And then you're left with the skin here. So as you can see, there are just two small seeds here that kind of look not that interesting. But this is actually what is going to turn into the coffee bean once they've been what we call processed and roasted. Processing is something that could deserve a whole video in itself, so I'll just give you a quick overview here. If we take these beans here and just let them dry inside the cherries, then they'll become what is known as natural processed coffee. If you had tried drinking natural processed coffee, you know that it's quite sweet and fruity and it has some berry notes quite often. So all these things come from this kind of processing. Then there's the honey process and that is where we take the skin off the seeds like we've done here and just let them dry with a slime on. This is called the mucilage in a coffee and biology language. Um, and this will also give some flavor to the final cup. And then there's the most common type of coffee which is called washed coffee. So with this process you depulp the cherry, so that basically means take off the skin and then you ferment the seeds, these ones here, in a water tank for a day or two and that will make it possible to wash the kind of like sticky slime off the seeds. And then after that you can dry the seeds. Next step after the seeds have gone through this process is to let it dry for a while. After drying, they're still not quite ready. There's a hard layer outside the seed called the parchment. So this will also have to be removed before the coffee bean can be roasted. So when you hear all this, you might be thinking, hey, if there's so much stuff involved in roasting coffee, why don't we just eat the coffee fruit instead? Or maybe even turn it into some kind of uh, healthy and energetic smoothie. As you can see, there's not really any fruit meat to speak of on the coffee cherry. It's mostly just the mucilage and then this uh, kind of like dense skin here. It's not really like a cherry skin, it's a lot harder and less appetizing. I promised you I was going to eat a coffee cherry, so I guess now is about the right time. This one here looks good, okay. Kind of fresh taste. 
not the sweetest cherry I tried, but um, it's not harsh tasting. Kind of like a slightly sweet fresh lettuce or something like that. So the taste is actually kind of sweet and refreshing, but the skin is a bit rough and the seeds are just super hard, so I'm not gonna bite into it. I think I would just crack a tooth or something like that. So to answer your question, there's just not much point in eating coffee cherries. It's mostly just skin and seed and both are kind of rough. What happens when you roast the coffee seed is that it becomes brittle and easy to grind. Now roasting of course also adds a bunch of flavor to the coffee, but the reason it started back in the days is probably just that it was the best way to extract the caffeine from the coffee cherry. It's kind of weird that roasting is one of the things we talk a lot about today. It contributes with a lot of flavor, but it's probably a coincidence that we roast coffee. I guess you can actually see cooking the same way. Today it's all about making something tasty, but when it first started out it was probably more about making uh, food easier to digest. Okay, so you might be sitting out there thinking, this is fun, but how can I use this knowledge to improve my coffee? I think there are three takeaways from this little look at the coffee cherry. First, all the most important things happen at farm level. By this I mean that we can look at the green and the red cherry and then it's immediately clear that coffee that is ripe will taste a lot better than coffee that's unripe. You probably know the difference between the flavor of a green banana and the yellow one and it's kind of the same with coffee. If you buy commercial coffee you can be pretty sure that some unripe cherries are going to end up in your bag of coffee. That's one of the reasons it's tasting sour instead of sweet and nice like a specialty coffee typically does. Secondly, when you see coffee as a fruit, you'll also realize that there are many different kinds of coffee with different flavors out there. If you live in a more cold country and buy fruit in a supermarket, you probably don't notice it that much. But if you have access to fresh fruit, you also know that there are so many different kinds of species and they tend to taste quite different. So just to take an example, mangoes, I think you could probably name 50 to 100 cultivars and they will all have different shapes, size, taste and so on. So let's say that you specifically like varietals like Pacamara or Geisha. Well, that's not so strange because they are actually different from each other. The third takeaway I hope that you get from this video is that you become a bit more resistant to all those weird coffee myths and marketing. For instance, if you look at that green bean, it will not be a good coffee bean. Even if a famous coffee brand buys it and roasts it, it's just not going to taste good. It's a bit like when you're going to a sushi restaurant. Even Jiro can't make that low quality farmed salmon taste like a wild caught one. So I think studying the coffee cherry, understanding the transformation from seed to roasted bean is actually quite essential if you want to be a true coffee connoisseur. And one other thing it will definitely teach you is respect for the farmer's work. You'll quickly realize that it's a lot of cherries just to cover your morning coffee. So what do we have here? Probably like 20 seeds or something like that. So yeah, it's not even like a quarter of a cup. One quick thing I want to show you before we're wrapping up for today is what a cherry can actually become. So in the beginning of this year, I planted a coffee seed like this and now it's actually turning into this little baby plant here. So hopefully in a few years I can be self-sufficient with coffee if I'm really lucky. Another thing I want to show you is this here, which is called cascara. So this is actually the dried skin of the coffee fruit and you can make tea on it and use it for various like cooking purposes and stuff like that. Historically it's been seen as a byproduct, but I think it has a bunch of potential and many other people in the coffee industry are also very interested in this product here. But that is a story for another day. Okay, if you like this video then give it a thumbs up and if you loved it then consider hitting the subscribe button below. Oh, and by the way, do you want your own little coffee baby plant? Then I'll do a giveaway of these seeds here. So uh, enter the giveaway below and then I'll pick a winner and send out some seeds to you and then you can grow your own plant. Did you know that the coffee bean is actually a seed? Has this changed anything for you? I'd love to hear more about your experiences down in the comment section as well. That's it for today. I'll see you in another coffee video very soon.